Do you think that this lost season hurts LeBron's title quest in Los Angeles or makes it much more difficult? It doesn't hurt it at all because I feel like LeBron's going to be hungry. And I know he's going to be 35 or 30, is he 35 next year, 36, somewhere around there. Um, he's going to prove everybody wrong. Like he's always been doing around the league. You know what I mean? Just, just LeBron's going like LeBron has so much weight on his shoulders. He's used to the spot. Like everywhere he goes, like it's a season didn't come back. And next year, play, there's going to be a lot of teams get better. Golden State's going to get better. Um, Dallas going to get better. Memphis, all these teams in the Western Conference, even the Kings and Phoenix are going to be better. But I feel like the Lakers going to show why that they're still the best team next year, regardless if the season comes back or not. LeBron's going to be motivated. Dang, everybody on the Lakers going to be motivated if the season gets canceled. You know what I mean? So I just feel like LeBron is going to win the title at least one in LA before he retires. The only reason I bring that up, and uh, I, I, it's hard because this argument applies to literally everyone. And I think that LeBron is in that same category where Tom Brady is, where like, they defy the logic in terms of aging, right? Mm -hmm. Like Kobe talks about how he uh, aged like a fine wine, like vino, right? Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say that in general, if we were talking about anyone else, it makes the quest a little bit more difficult because you add another year of age to yourself. You add months off away from the game, being able to put up shots, weightlifting, being in that groove that the Lakers were in. But because it's LeBron James, I'm kind of in that boat of saying it doesn't actually affect it. If anything, it only influences his will with the Lakers squad as a whole to win a title. You know, they're going to want to win this, especially now more so than ever because the season is potentially canceled or if it comes back all these months off, all we're going to talk about is will they or won't they? And what it will amount to being is they will probably push themselves to be either in the finals or or against the Clippers in a deep series in the Western Conference Finals. And I think LeBron's hunger only goes up from here. Yeah, it goes up, man. He, he may pull, a, pull one of those playoffs that you've never seen LeBron before, you know? He may have a classic playoffs, you know? He's hungry. He, to be honest, man, to be honest, Alex, I feel like LeBron wants to prove to be wrong so, so bad. I feel like he hears Agreed. that. He feels the media talking. I feel like he's just training and training. Once he wins, he's going to say something to Skate Bayless. I want him to say something to Skate Bayless so bad so Skate Bayless can be quiet. So tell me about the story with Charles Barkley. Because the NBA was on TNT, they had the All-Star game, they're doing the draft, and uh, somebody picked the first pick, and I tweeted out, Charles Barkley would pick Krispy Kreme Donuts for the first pick. And he <laughs> roasted me, called me a called me a fat ass, and uh, it got went viral. I was on Complex Sports. It's on my YouTube channel as well, if you want to go check it out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, it was a crazy 30 seconds. I got a lot of DMs. I got over 300 messages on DM. Shout out to Charles Barkley, man. It was crazy. So you want to get uh, you want to get Charles Barkley back right now? Um, it's all good. It's all love, Charles. You see no. what's behind me? Yes, yeah. I, see him. I so, have not, no hard feeling towards Barkley. <laughs> no, I think he was just he knew I was trolling and he just wanted to snap back, you know. Of course, I mean, but to be real, I would pick Krispy Kreme Donuts first overall. But yeah, that's Krispy, just me. Hey, Krispy Kreme Donuts is solid. I should be sponsored. <laughs> yeah, Krispy Kreme. If you're tuning in right now, this guy got roasted by Charles Barkley, and it's documented. Please give Jonathan some free donuts for life, possibly. <laughs> but yeah. I gotta give Chuck a shout out. You've been the perfect piece to add to my studio. I've got your mug shot on a poster that I actually made. I designed these myself. This is your mug shot from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and the dated uh, the time was. December 22nd, 1991. It has your name, and the best part is, under the mugshot, it says your most famous quote, I am not a role model. Who is the greatest Laker of all time? Kobe Bryant. Um, I want to tell you why. Kobe Bryant's demeanor on the court, playing with passion, hustle, grit, grind. Just his demeanor. He did everything in his power to win. You know how some players... When they break their finger, sit out two weeks. Kobe, Gary V popped it back in, went to go play. Sprained his ankle, just overall, I love his game. Just like his demeanor, it's, his game is like Michael Jordan's. If you go on YouTube, there's a video, Michael Jordan and Kobe yep. similarity. They shoot just like each other. And I just like how Kobe doesn't make excuses. You know, he just goes through, makes a mistake. He'll learn from it, and keep it pushing. That's what I do on my podcast. You know, I listen to my podcast, fix the mistake and get better from it. You know, that's how I feel about Kobe, man. Would you argue Magic Johnson? Kobe's better than Magic. This has been a debate that we actually had on Courtside Radio. Mm -hmm. I went with Kobe Bryant, whereas Michael went with Magic Johnson. He stated yeah. his case, winning those chips, winning MVP. 
and bringing alive the rivalry with the Celtics and Lakers again, putting them back on the map and having that rivalry in particular with Larry Bird, right? To me, Kobe's the greatest Laker of all time for the rings, for what he meant to the city. And I think there's something to be said about a guy who's not even from Los Angeles or even California coming here and being the adopted son, the face of a franchise. And when you think of basketball in California, there's one player that becomes synonymous with it. It's Kobe Bryant. He, yeah, like you said, he is Jordan incarnate. He is, if there's one A to one B in terms of greatest shooting guards of all time, Kobe is the one B to Jordan's one A because they're identical. Jordan just happened to go six and zero in a finals, have two three peats, and it, Jordan was just another animal during that time of the NBA. Kobe did it in two different eras. His willingness and his ability to fight through injuries, like you mentioned, are second to none. Him having multiple nicknames, the Mamba, Black Mamba, Vino, all of these things play into his legacy as a Laker and what he represented to California, to Los Angeles, and to the city. Kobe will be missed tremendously, but I actually talked to Kobe on Twitter through DM, and he followed me too when he got injured and stuff, and he was watching the Spurs-Lakers game, and he was tweeting out, he followed me, and uh, man, it's, it's crazy that it's gone, but overall, Kobe's the greatest Laker of all time, man.